Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is in continuation with the practical pathology series which I was covering. In this particular uh, session, I'll be discussing about the gross and microscopic features of important slides which you'll be, you know, facing during practical examination. The system I have selected today is renal system wherein I'll be, you know, uh, briefly describing three important conditions that is chronic pyelonephritis, renal cell carcinoma, particularly the clear cell type and then the Wilms tumor. These three are the important slides which you will be facing in your practical examinations. So now coming to the chronic pyelonephritis. So we all know that this is a chronic inflammation of the tubules and interstitium. Okay. And this is associated with fibrosis of the renal parenchyma. And this is one of the most common cause of end stage kidney disease. So the you, you will be also asked about what are the causes of chronic pyelonephritis, right? So the two most common causes of chronic pyelonephritis are reflux nephropathy and second one being obstructive, obstructive cause. Obstructive cause most common being, you know, renal calculi. So these are the two important causes of chronic pyelonephritis. Now moving on straight away to the gross findings. So this is a very classical gross uh, photograph which I got from this particular website wherein you know you, you can identify that this is a kidney. So what you should remember here is that the kidneys are contracted, the affected kidney is contracted but then you know the contraction is not a symmetrical contraction. So this is a asymmetric contraction and you find that there are irregular scars on the external surface okay and these scars are are very coarse scars. They are discrete coarse corticomedullary scars which they are overlying you know the blunted or deformed calluses. So these are the dilated blunted and deformed calluses and often you find you can find that there is flattering of papillae as well. So this is a coarse scar illustration of a coarse scar overlaying the dilated and blunted calyx. Okay and most of these scars are usually found in the upper or lower poles but in the end stage renal disease you can find scars throughout the renal parenchyma throughout the external surface of the kidney so remember these are coarse scars coarse depressed scars classically they are also referred to as u-shaped scars okay so microscopically you need to understand that this is a chronic pyelonephritis right tubule disease of tubules and interstitium so you should look into the pathology of tubules and interstitium the tubules are of varying sizes first of all you need to identify that the slide what you have got is that of a kidney right so you need to identify that by looking at the glomeruli you can make out that this is a these are all the glomeruli so you are dealing with a section of uh, renal uh, parenchyma so you find that the tubules are often of variable sizes which often show atrophy some tubules are dilated some are atrophied Okay, the another characteristic feature is that these tubules are filled with eosinophilic material. They look like you know the structure of thyroid, that's why it's referred to as thyroidization. Obviously, we are dealing with chronic pyelonephritis. You should appreciate chronic inflammation in the interstitium and various features in and around the glomeruli, which we'll be discussing in detail now. So, the first one is thyroidization of tubules. What are those? They are basically atrophied follicles which are filled with eosinophilic secretions. Does it not look like thyroid to you? Right? So this is why it is referred to as thyroidization of the renal tubules and you find chronic inflammation in the interstitium. So what are the glomerular changes you find in chronic pyelonephritis? One, you can find that there is periglomerular fibrosis. I mean fibrosis around the glomeruli. You can also find that there is sclerosis of the glomeruli. The entire glomeruli is now sclerosed. You can find dense eosinophilic material replacing the glomeruli and that is glomerular sclerosis. So initially it all begins with periglomerular fibrosis and finally at the end stage you know there will be glomerular sclerosis and obviously you find lots of these chronic inflammatory cells in the interstitium look at these are the dilated tubules which are filled with these eosinophilic material thyroidization of tubules so that's about the histology illustration you're also asked to write a diagram right so this is how you can represent chronic pyelonephritis 
ensure that you write about the thyroidization of tubules chronic inflammatory cells in the interstitium and then you find the glomerular write the glomerular findings in the form of periglomerular fibrosis or even the sclerosis of the glomerular here so that's about chronic pyelonephritis the second important lesion which we'll be discussing it is renal cell carcinoma clear cell type okay so renal cell carcinoma we all know it is a malignant tumor of kidney and that arises from renal tubular epithelium it is also referred to as hypernephroma also called as gravid's tumor or adenocarcinoma of the kidney it often occurs in 6th to 7th decades of life with a slight male preponderance okay how will these uh, tumors look on gross examinations so this is a very classical illustration classical you know gross photograph of the renal cell carcinoma see the cut surface is usually solid yellowish gray white with areas of hemorrhage necrosis and cystic degeneration and that's what we call it as variegated appearance okay remember this tumor is bosselated obviously you know when the tumor grows beyond the confines of the renal parenchyma external surface often looks like bosselated you note that these tumors often arises in the poles of the kidney and particularly the upper pole is most commonly affected right so poles of the kidney external surface bosselated and the cut surface classically you find this yellowish gray white areas okay along with variable amounts of hemorrhage necrosis and cystic degeneration so microscopically we need to know that there are different types uh, which includes clear cell carcinoma papillary carcinoma chromophobe carcinoma and collecting duct carcinoma but then what we will study today is about the renal cell carcinoma of clear cell type okay so this is a scanner magnification which shows the compressed renal parenchyma here and that is the tumor obviously you can make out that it's more paler as compared to that of a normal compressed renal parenchyma so still a higher magnification you can appreciate that this is a kidney by looking at the glomeruli and tubules right so these are the normal uh, adjacent kidney and that is the tumor so tumor how do you, how does the tumor look like they contain large nests of tumor cells you know these are collections of tumor cells which are separated by a delicate fibrovascular septa let's go and look this in higher magnification this is a large nests of tumor cells and these tumor cells are round to polygonal with abundant clear cytoplasm okay no absolutely nothing here because all the content is washed up during routine processing of tissues so abundant clear cytoplasm with a centrally placed nuclei and look at this a delicate septa delicate because it's a very thin septa and you find these you know capillaries here still higher magnification showing a septa delicate septa with capillaries filled with few blood vessels few rbcs capillaries filled with few rbcs and these are large polygonal cells clear cytoplasm centrally placed small pycnotic dot like nuclei okay now this is a illustration just draw these clusters of tumor cells you know large polygonal tumor cells you know nests of tumor cells which are separated by this delicate septa containing blood vessels and appreciate these tumor cells are polygonal with a centrally placed nuclei but a simple uh, you know slide to diagnose very easy you know illustration to write also so that's about renal cell carcinoma the third one quickly we'll move on to wilms tumor it is also referred to as nephroblastoma this is the most common pediatric renal cell tumor renal tumor okay it occurs in children between 2 to 5 years of age majority of the tumors are sporadic but sometimes you know it can also be associated with various syndromes you, you will be asked often asked about these syndromes what are those syndromes one is wagr syndrome wagr stands for wilms tumor aniridia genital abnormalities and retardation mental retardation where there will be deletion of wt1 gene second one is dennis dennish drash syndrome where you find gonadal dysgenesis and early onset nephropathy okay here also you have negative inactivating mutation in wt1 gene the third one is beckwith weidman syndrome which is associated with hemihypertrophy hepatomegaly renomegaly macroglossia and adrenal cytomegaly this is basically due to genomic imprinting principally involving the igf2 gene insulin like growth factor 2 gene okay just remember the names of these three syndromes grossly it's 
you can appreciate the difference between real cell carcinoma and this one right yes this is a very large well circumscribed mass which can be multicentric you know and bilateral in very small percentage of cases often these are single large you know well circumscribed mass almost replacing the entire kidney look at this very thin rim of renal parenchyma is noted here so the whole thing is a tumor on cut section this tumor is soft as compared to that of renal cell carcinoma soft and homogeneous gray white to gray tan and you find you know areas of hemorrhage necrosis and cystic degeneration can be seen so microscopically the classical histopathological feature is that of a triphasic pattern what do you mean by triphasic pattern you find three components three different components one is blastemal components epithelial components and the stromal components if you three all these three components it is called triphasic if you find any two of these it's called biphasic wilds tumor okay so classically it is triphasic let us see what are these components the first one being blastemal component what are these blastemal components they are basically sheets of small blue cells all you see is you know the entire slide is replaced by blue ish you know uh, cells and these are small round blue cells this is the least differentiated cellular element that is the blastemal component second one is the epithelial component i mean you you can find some amount of epithelial differentiation at this magnification this is a scanner magnification here you can find vaguely you know forming you no know, gland like structures or tubule like structures so these are epithelial component where you find abortive tubules and abortive glomeruli we will be look at look at look at this in higher magnification so blastemal is sheets of small round blue cells and this is epithelial component you know they look like tubules but they are not tubules because why they are not tubules they are not limited by a basement membrane okay they are tubule like structures formed by these cells that's why they are referred to as abortive tubules similarly abortive glomeruli these are not actually capillaries normal glomeruli you find capillaries right so they are basically you know the uh, tumor cells in the form of uh, glomeruli abortive glomeruli and the third component is the stromal component okay stromal component can be fibroblastic that means spindle cell stroma or can be myxoid stroma in this case it's a fibroblastic spindle cell stroma stroma okay and the stromal component may show heterologous elements like you know you can see skeletal muscle you can see adipose tissue smooth muscle bone cartilage or even a neuroglial tissue so such is the heterogeneity of the stromal component so illustration very simple just try to draw all these components one is a blastemal component just write sheets of small round blue cells second one is an epithelial component ensure that you uh, write the tubules and glomeruli like structures okay in the form of abortive tubules and abortive glomeruli no basement membrane just arrangement of these cells in the form of tubules and glomeruli the third one is mesenchymal component or the stromal component in this case i have shown fibroblastic component so that completes the wilms tumor so we discussed about the gross and microscopy of three important lesions in the renal system okay which you will be facing in examinations good luck for your examinations if you have like this video hit the like button do comment if you have any doubts and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share if you find this video useful and finally wish you all a very happy new year 2020 bye bye